Welcome to the physics classroom's video tutorial on vibrations and waves. The topic of this video is the nature of a wave and we want to know what is a wave and what makes wave motion different than other types of motion. Uh, Mr. H, let's get started. A wave is typically defined as a repeated and periodic disturbance of the medium. In physics, we distinguish between a pulse and a wave, where a pulse is a single disturbance and a wave is a repeated and ongoing disturbance. This is a model of a slinky, where each coil of the slinky is being represented by a rigid sphere. Currently, those coils are at rest. This is the rest position of the slinky. But if I take the first coil and vibrate it up and down, I will disturb it and introduce a disturbance in the medium that spreads throughout the medium. That's why we say the source of all waves is a vibrating object. This particular wave is known as a sine wave. You're familiar with it probably from math class. It has the familiar high points and low points known as crests and troughs. Waves are everywhere, all around us. Can you think of some examples of waves in your life? Like where do you see waves? I've asked this question of my students for years and they've come up with many great ideas and one of them almost always is we see waves on the water. Like if you were to throw a stone in the water, you'd disturb the water and create a series of ripples that spread outwards from that location of the disturbance. Then there's waves on a slinky that you're going to see in your physics class real soon. Then there's sine waves on your graphing calculator when you plot y equal the sine of x. Then there's the, the flags which wave back and forth in the wind or the tall grasses that wave back and forth in the empty field. Somebody always comes up with the idea of stadium waves, where each fan in the stadium stands up and sits back down in perfect harmony so that you can create a ripple that travels around the stadium. While it's really a pulse and not a wave, we'll count it as an example of a wave-like motion. Then some people are blessed with wavy hair. And then some people mention, well, I've seen waves on an EKG or ECG machine. Someone chimes in, I've seen them on an oscilloscope, repeating pattern that repeats itself across the screen of that EKG or oscilloscope screen. Then there's the waves that we don't see, but we know they're there because of their effect upon objects, like the microwave which cooks your food, or the ultraviolet wave that cooks your skin, or the x-rays that could probably cook a lot of things if we let them. Now as we talk about waves, you're going to have to distinguish between a wave and the medium through which the wave travels. The medium is not the wave. The medium is simply the substance or material that carries the wave. You've likely heard of the news media that carries the news to your home. It could be the newspaper or the television news show, or it could be the internet news. The, the news travels through that news media to your home. As we talk about waves like water waves, which have water as the medium, or slinky waves that have slinky as the medium, or stadium waves that have the fans in the stadium as the medium, as we talk about these waves, you'll have to distinguish between the wave and the media. Mechanical waves travel through a medium, and as they do, the individual particles of the medium vibrate back and forth about a fixed position. As those vibrations spread from one particle to the next particle, we begin to see a visible pattern established within the medium that we refer to as a wave. That wave is what moves from one end of the medium to the other end of the medium, but the particles themselves do not move. They simply vibrate about a fixed position. They're wigglers over the course of time. I like to think of the particles as wiggling, but the wave as moving. It's a collection of particles, a wiggle in time that extends through space. In this animation of a simple wave, you see wigglers and you see a wave. The particles wiggle. You can look at the red particles in particular and notice they're simply vibrating up and down. And then you can look at the pattern that's established of a sine wave with crests and troughs that travel from one end of the medium to the other end of the medium. It's always important to distinguish between particle motion and wave motion. What the particles do, which is to vibrate, and what the wave does, which is to move from one location to the other. The question is often asked, how do waves move? A mechanical wave will propagate or move or spread through a medium because of particle-to-particle -particle interaction. Here is our model of the slinky again with each coil being represented by a rigid sphere. If I take the first coil and begin to vibrate it up and down, 
I set that coil into vibrational motion. The first coil will pull on the second coil to set it into vibrational motion. The second coil pulls on the third coil to set it into vibrational motion. And soon, from coil to coil, particle to particle, we have the wave that has propagated or spread through the entire medium. In this situation, it's important to recognize that the particles do not have to move like this in order to have a wave. What must happen is the particles must interact with their neighboring particles in order to have wave motion. But the particles themselves simply vibrate about a fixed position. I'm often asked if particles don't move from one location to another, then what does move when you have a wave? And the answer is first, the wave pattern is seen to move, but second, energy is moved from one location to another. Waves are energy transport phenomenon. There's two basic ways to move energy from one location to another. And the first is by means of object motion. For instance, you take a baseball and you do some work on it and you give it some kinetic energy. The baseball moves through the air and carries energy with it. If I were to stand on the opposite end and the baseball were to hit me in the cheek, I would surely know that it was carrying energy with it. But the other means to move energy from one location to another is by means of wave motion. Energy is transported through the, through the medium by particle to particle interaction from the source to other locations in the medium. This is unique in that energy is transported without the actual movement of physical matter. We have many examples of this. Let's take for example, we take Curly and Moe, two of the three stooges, and a slinky. And Curly takes the slinky and tells Moe to put the other end of the slinky up next to his cheek and he gets a good hard pulse moving through that slinky and when that pulse reaches Mo, Mo's cheek would go like that and he would know that surely energy was moving through the medium but that first coil that Curly pulled on never moved an inch. That's an example of energy transport without material transport. We have light waves arriving on Earth to sustain life on Earth coming to Earth without the actual transport of material well, we do have things coming from the sun to earth, but that's not the reason that we have light waves reaching the earth. Light waves are an example of the movement of energy without the transport of physical material. Ocean waves crashing up on the shore are examples of large amounts of energy that reach the shore without the water from the middle of the ocean coming to the shore. That's another example of energy transport without the transport or movement of physical material. Finally, we have the stadium wave. If you're not familiar and when we have a stadium wave, the fans of the stadium stand up and sit back down without actually moving from their seat. Energy is being transport without the movement of material. I try to emphasize this to my students because many of them will someday go off to the university and will attend a football game and it will be time for the wave. And the cameras will focus on the crowd and there's the wave and you want to do it right. You don't want to get up out of your seat and move through, through that row like you were thinking some sort of particle has to move in order to have wave motion because that's not what happens. Which brings me to the story of Richard, who I saw doing the wrong thing. And I'm like, all I have to say is get it right now because you don't want to embarrass yourself like Richard. Please don't be a Richard. So let's revisit the question, what is a wave? A wave results when you have a collection of wigglers because it's a wiggle in time that extends itself through space. A wave is a repeated and periodic disturbance of the medium in which particles vibrate about a fixed position, transporting energy from one location to another by means of particle-to-particle -particle interaction. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources which you'll find on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a tutorial page, an excellent Minds on Physics mission, and two physics simulations that you can interact with. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.